Hi, I'm Saul Marcus. I am a naturopathic doctor, and this is going to be a short video on organic acid testing and neurotransmitters. Let's go over first what organic acids are. They are waste products of cellular function. So every moment of the day, all our cells are working, and as they work, they create metabolic waste. Organic acids are simply that metabolic waste. They can't be tested through the urine, and this is an indirect test for uh, mark metabolic function. And these can be used as a functional assessment of things like B vitamin status, toxicity, ability for cells to produce energy, gut dysbiosis even, and neurotransmitters. The bottom of the page is more of an example of exactly how this is working. So let's say the body needs some enzyme or nutrient to convert A into B. If we start seeing a lot of A spilling out into the urine, then we can surmise from that that there is a functional need for the nutrient that's needed for that conversion. So for example, the body will need use folate to convert this um, compound formino-glutamate into glutamate. So if a lot of this um, compound, which is often just simply called figlu, if that's being dumped into the urine, then we know that functionally speaking, there is a need for folate, even if a blood test to measure how much folate there is in the blood, even if that's normal, there still might be a functional need for it. To quickly go over some markers that you can find on an organic acid test, we can see markers for fatty acid metabolism, which is can your cells take fatty acids and break them down into um, energy. You can start seeing markers also for carbohydrate metabolism with relationship to B vitamin status and just cellular energy production um, to see if there are any metabolic blocks in the actual production of energy with, um, in terms of what's going on in the mitochondria. Methylmalamate and the um, fig glue that I just mentioned before, these are really good functional assessments of B12 and folate need, and these can be much better than the blood tests, which are often misleading. Let's jump into the neurotransmitter markers. There's a bunch of them which are typically run on organic acid tests. Some tests for dopamine, epinephrine, serotonin pathways, and so forth. We're going to start with the first two, vanamandolate and homovanolate. Now, these are markers for metabolism to dopamine and metabolism to epinephrine, also called adrenaline. So we can see on the graph, the body will take the amino acids, phenylalanine or tyrosine, and convert those um, through several steps, first into L-DOPA, and then L-DOPA is converted with the help of vitamin B6 into dopamine. When this happens, you start you have a byproduct called homovanillate, uh, a byproduct of the whole dopamine pathway, and this HVA starts getting dumped into the urine. So if HVA is elevated, then that's showing that there is a high amount of activity down this pathway. If HVA is low, then that means that there's a lack of activity down this pathway, and that might be for several reasons. From a straight up simple nutritional perspective based upon this test, you can start looking at um, tyrosine, amino acids. You can also look at cofactors such as vitamin B6. Looking further down the pathway, we can see that dopamine is then later going to be converted into norepinephrine and epinephrine. And these are this happens in the adrenals. Now, if this conversion is happening, then we have a lot of vanomandolate dumped down into the urine. And vanomandolate has uh, used for decades as a medical test for um, certain um, conditions that will create huge amounts of epinephrine. But more recently, in more functional medicine, this test has been used as a functional assessment of how well the body is making norepinephrine and epinephrine. Now, these are things that you want in balance. You don't want too much epinephrine. You don't want too much adrenaline, and you don't. Want, you also don't want too little of it. And sometimes, if there is some issue, a mood issue, especially with anxiety, you might see this thrown off in one direction or the other. If these markers are really high, then you start thinking in terms of 
what can be done to help calm the person down if these are low and it could be low even if someone is having panic attacks but in that case then you want to start thinking about is there a need for tyrosine is there a need for some of these um, you know vitamins that are used in the conversion and so forth now let's look at serotonin markers. I think serotonin is probably the more well-known neurotransmitter as it, it's been used a lot as, as a means to promote psychiatric medications. But anyway, let's just jump into this and then we'll, we'll talk, kind of talk about it as we go along. We start with tryptophan, which is a basic amino acid, and that will be converted into 5-HTP. 5-HTP is a very common supplement that's sold to raise serotonin. And the 5-HTP is going to be converted into serotonin and then melatonin. So serotonin is, you know, in a simplified way, it's called like the feel-good neurotransmitter. And then melatonin, we need that to sleep. And this is why um, tryptophan and 5-HCP are commonly used for some cases of insomnia. Especially insomnia where someone cannot fall asleep, that indicates that there might be a need for melatonin. And in those cases, taking either 5-HCP or melatonin as a supplement may help. But when we start looking at an organic acid test, it becomes a little bit more complicated. We don't simply see a marker of serotonin metabolism. And what's going to be on the organic acid test is a compound 5-hydroxyindole acetate. If a lot of that's spilling out, then you know a lot of activity is going on the serotonin pathway. But there's also going to be markers of other compounds like chironate and colonate and also picolinate, which I didn't put on, on this graph. And these are other metabolites coming off of this whole 5-HTP serotonin pathway. And what these other compounds are, you know, are inflammatory cytokines. They are chemicals made by the liver in order to for the, help the body produce an inflammatory response. Now, in some people, they might have a lot of inflammation going on, and if they take 5-HTP, instead of producing serotonin, they're not going to produce that. They're going to produce these inflammatory markers. And they're doing that because they are inflamed. In fact, they might have a depressed mood because their body is so busy producing inflammatory markers that it's not producing serotonin. And this is part of the body's internal self-regulating logic. And I have a whole 30-minute video on YouTube about the relationship between inflammation and uh, mood disorders and so forth. So that's kind of worth looking into. But the basic um, idea that I want to get through is that it's not so simple as serotonin is the feel-good neurotransmitter, so you need enough tryptophan and maybe some B vitamins in order to make it. It's more complicated than that. If things are not set in the right way for the body to, to want to make serotonin, it's not going to want to make serotonin. And if there is infection going on, if there's a lot of inflammation going on, then as a self-protective mechanism, the body will start to slow down and put people in a bit of a more hibernated state in order to conserve energy to focus on the real problem. So the, this is going to change serotonin pathway. It will also um, have a chance to change um, thyroid pathways. So these people, you might run a thyroid test on them, and you'll see a low TSH and low thyroid hormone. And then you can go to all these thyroid websites and learn that you are, have hypothyroidism, which is true, but it's hypothyroidism as the body's response to some type of stress. It's not the type of hypothyroidism that requires one take synthroid or armor or some type of um, thyroid hormone replacement. In fact, in these situations, if you were to take a thyroid hormone replacement or you were to take more 5-HTP, if you start trying to force these pathways, then you're just um, contributing to the inflammatory issue. You really need to work with the body and help resolve the inflammation. However, you cannot take something like mental health and the myriad of mental um, symptoms such as depression, anxiety, panic attack and so forth and say it's all about neurotransmitters or it's all about inflammation. The body is way too complicated for that. Now, although 
lab tests are helpful and it's good that we have organic acid testing and even like amino acid testing and these functional labs if needed it's important to not become myopic and say it's all about this because it's not all about one thing there are so many different factors that can uh, play into how we feel emotionally speaking and um, one more thing to say about the neurotransmitter test is even if someone is the, who is depressed has low serotonin, that is going to just beg the question, do they have low, are they depressed because they have low serotonin or do they have low serotonin because they're depressed? And these questions have not really been answered. And you also cannot say someone is depressed because they have low serotonin because you're not going to see that verified all the time on lab tests. In fact, they have a lot of problems actually verifying, yes, this is the cause of depression. Because you can start running lab tests on someone who just feels depressed and if and, and start seeing a lot of normal labs come out because not everyone has the same thing going on. Mental symptoms are the end result of different factors. And this these can be um, psychological factors. We don't want to take psychology and throw it out the window. Someone's emotional environment plays a big part in how you feel. And you can't take someone, put them in a really bad emotional environment and say, oh, here's your happy pill. Maybe that's what they try to do in psychiatry at times, but when you get into the realm of natural health, it's about everything. It's about nutrition for sure, but it's also about psychology, and the environment, it's a holistic framework, is looking at everything. We, of course, want to look at infections and inflammation, which I mentioned before. Hormones play a big part of, of this as well. Thyroid hormone, cortisol, our major stress hormone, you want to consider that. Poor digestion, if you can't digest your food and get nutrients from it, you're not going to feel well. Also, certain um, organisms that can live in our GI tract can contribute to depression, anxiety. Um, candida is probably the most well-known of those. You can consider physical or structural issues going on. Toxicity in general as well, as we live in a very, very toxic world. So if I have someone coming in who has panic attacks, for example, or feels depressed, what I generally am not going to do is say, oh, let's run this organic acid test and look at your neurotransmitters. Now, I might do that, but what I really do initially is go through a comprehensive history to see what factors are off in them. Why are they feeling depressed? And whether if that's nutritional, if that's psychological, if it's a, a toxicity problem, wherever the totality of their case is pointing, that's where I'm going to go. The organic acid test is useful in some situations. And, you know, if someone says, look, I want an organic acid test, you know, I have no problem saying, okay, you can run an organic acid test. I mean, this is basically an out-of-pocket test in most situations. So if someone wants to pay for it, that's fine. But usually speaking, it's in the holistic assessment that you can find what's really going on. And, yeah, the organic acid test, think of it as another tool that can be um, used if needed in a case. But one of my little uh, issues with functional medicine in general is that it starts to tends to start reducing all things down to just neurotransmitters or these tests. When ultimately the neurotransmitter levels, even if we could measure them perfectly, which we can't, this is just a urine test to look at byproducts of it. But even if you could like wave a magic wand and measure all neurotransmitters in the brain, that's not necessarily telling you why they're off if they are off. Okay, so that's it for now. Okay, bye.